So today we're talking about coterminal angles and reciprocal trig functions, both things we've actually already talked about. So just as a reminder, coterminal, co meaning together, terminal meaning ending, so our angles that end together in the same place on our unit circle. Okay, the technical definition is angles who share the same terminal side, so they, the side where they stop is the same on our unit circle. So for example, so look at the example here, negative 30 degrees, right? If we went 30 degrees in the negative direction and positive 330 would end in the same place. That terminal side is the same. So we'd say they are coterminal. Now, if I wanted to find another angle that's coterminal to both of these, we could actually go around the circle one more time. I could add an additional 360 degrees on, right? Which would, uh, you know, if you added those together, be 690 degrees is also coterminal to both of those angles. Or likewise, we could actually go 360 in the negative direction, uh, which would be negative 390 is also coterminal to those angles. Okay, and you could actually just keep making laps around over and over again. There's technically an infinite number of coterminal angles. Okay, so how to find a coterminal angle is we'd say, because we want to end in the same place, we need to go 360 degrees from where we are or two pi radians from where we are. So we can just keep adding 360 over and over again or subtracting 360 over and over again or the same with two pi. So let's do some examples. Find the coterminal angle between zero and 360, so it's giving me a specific range. Remember we said there could be infinitely many. In this range, there should just be one. Uh, or zero to two pi if we're talking about radians. Okay, so our first one is given in degrees, so I want the coterminal angle that would fall between zero and 360. Okay, so our number is clearly too big. We are too big to be in this range. So we need to subtract 360. So we go back around the circle, subtract 360, okay? And we get an answer of 180 degrees. So then we check, is my answer in this range? Yeah, it is. And so there's my answer. The coterminal angle between zero and 360 would be 180 degrees. That would be the angle that would end in the same place. Okay, for B, this time we have a negative 600 degrees. Okay, we are much too low, right? We're actually below zero. So what we're going to do is start by adding 360. Okay, and note that my answer is still negative, negative 240 degrees. So we're still not in our range. So we need to go around the circle again, add another 360. Okay, so we added 360 a second time, and now we are finally at 120 degrees, which does fall in our range. So the coterminal angle between zero and 360 it's the same as negative 600 degrees is 120. Okay, now note our next two are given in radians. So if I need to add or subtract two pi because these are fractions, we may need common denominators. So let's first look at this one, 10 thirds pi. Well, 10 thirds is like three and a third. We're, we're beyond two pi, right? This is actually more than three pi. So we're gonna to need to subtract two pi, but we're gonna need a common denominator because we're adding or subtracting fractions. So let's use a common denominator of three. So we're gonna have 10 pi thirds minus six pi thirds, the equivalent of two pi, and that ends up giving us four pi thirds. So we look at the fraction here, four thirds. Is that between zero and two? Right, that'll tell us if we're between zero and two pi. Four divided by three is like one and a third. Yes, we are in that range. Four pi thirds, in fact, hopefully you recognize that is actually a measurement on our standard unit circle before going beyond those. Okay, what about our next one? Clearly we have a negative value, that's no good. So we're gonna need to add two pi at least once. So let's add two pi. Let's use a common denominator of two. So we have negative five pi halves plus four pi halves. Gives me, uh-oh, negative pi halves. 
we're still negative, I'm not in my range. So let's add another two pi, which we can just use this fraction, right? That's already got our common denominator and is equivalent to two pi. So we'll do it again. And now we get positive three pi halves. Three halves pi is 1.5, right? Three halves. So yes, that falls in our range. Okay, so this is how you can find a coterminal angle. For any given degrees, you either just keep adding or subtracting 360 over and over again until you fall into the range you want, or add or subtract 2 pi. Obviously, radians, you have to find common denominators, so it's a little more difficult. Okay, and we will definitely use those coterminal angles in a bit. Let's review the three reciprocal trig functions. So we have cosecant, labeled CSC for short, or pronounced cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, one over sine. Secant, abbreviated SEC, is the reciprocal of cosine. And cotangent, C-O-T, is the reciprocal of tangent. So extra note here about cotangent and tangent. Remember that tangent was defined as sine divided by cosine, right? The Y coordinate over the X coordinate. Well, it's reciprocal is cosine over sine. It is the reciprocal of this fraction, right? So extra kind of definition for cotangent that we may need. Okay, find the value of each quadrant one reciprocal trig value. So cosecant, first thing I need to know is what is that the reciprocal of? Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So I'm even going to write that in. Reciprocal of sine, and in fact, it is the reciprocal of the sine of that angle, the sine of 30 degrees. So if you use your left hand trick, 30 degrees is your ring finger, and sine is on the right. So the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half, right? Squared of 1 over 2 or 1 half. Sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. But we're not looking for the sine of 30 degrees, we're looking for the cosecant of 30 degrees. So what do I do with that fraction we just got back? The reciprocal. And in fact, the cosecant of 30 degrees is two over one or two. The cosecant of 30 degrees is two. Now some calculators do have cosecant, secant, and cotangent programmed in. It's pretty rare though. Most of them you actually have to type in one over sine of 30. Um, and even then they're they're gonna give you a, a decimal back uh, for a lot of these. Obviously this time they would give you the nice number two. Okay, let's try another one. Secant, okay, what is secant the reciprocal of? Cosine, so this is the reciprocal of cosine of 30 degrees. So again, I could use my left hand trick. What is the cosine of 30 degrees? 30 degrees is my ring finger and cosine's on the left. So this ends up being the square root of three over two. But remember, I'm not looking for cosine, I need its reciprocal, secant. So the secant of 30 degrees, I need to flip my fraction upside down, but we're not supposed to leave radicals in the bottom. So let's multiply top and bottom by square root of three, and we end up with two root three over three. The exact value of secant of 30 degrees is two root three over three. Okay, one more here, cotangent. So cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. And let's go ahead and convert our radians to degrees. They tend to be easier to work with. 180 divided by two, remember pi is equivalent to 180 degrees. So essentially we're finding the reciprocal of tangent of 90 degrees. So tangent of 90 degrees. Now remember you need to memorize those five values of tangent. At 90 degrees, tangent is undefined. Well, let's stop for a second because I'm going to have to figure out what is the reciprocal of undefined? It seems like we shouldn't have an answer. But if you remember, the reason tangent was undefined, the point there, right, our cosine and sine values were 0 and 1, the reason it was undefined is because tangent would be one over zero, right? Y over X sine over cosine. That's why it's undefined. So actually it's that fraction. 
So what is the reciprocal of that fraction? 0 over 1, which is 0. The cotangent of 90 degrees is not undefined. It's actually 0. OK, so a little tricky on that last one. But cotangent, when you get that undefined value, it, you have to remember why it's undefined. It's because we have the fraction 1 over 0, but that reciprocal does give us an actual answer of 0. OK, so let's combine these together. How do I find the exact trig values on the unit circle without having a unit circle in front of me? OK, so the first thing I want to do is kind of what we did a second ago. Identify if the trig function is a reciprocal trig function. Is it secant, cosecant, cotangent? And then what is it the reciprocal of? And let's continue using that function, sine, cosine, or tangent. Okay. Obviously, if it's not a reciprocal trig function, then just use sine, cosine, or tangent, whatever it's asking you for. If our angle, theta, is not between 0 and 360, or 0 and 2 pi, if we're not in our normal unit circle, if we've gone beyond that, find its coterminal angle, that is. Okay, so we're kind of like we did in the beginning. We want to find an angle between 0 and 360 or 0 and 2 pi, essentially the same thing we did for these three. Okay, once we've done that, if the angle I have is not in quadrant 1, we're going to find and use the reference angle. Remember, we're referencing angles in quadrant 1, right? So we would be less than or equal to 90 degrees there. And to find a reference angle, we ask ourselves kind of, is it closer to 0, 180, or 360? Or if it's in radians, are we closer to 0 pi or 2 pi? These are all values from the x-axis. Right? Like, how far are you from the x-axis? OK, so let's we'll try some of that out. Once I know how far away from the x-axis we are, and I have my reference angle, we can use our left hand trick to uh, come up with that value again. We can use all students take calculus to figure out if my value should be positive or negative, depending on the quadrant we're in. And then if I do have to do a reciprocal function and we flip it upside down, remember to rationalize, get rid of any radicals in the denominator or in the bottom of the fraction uh, if necessary. Okay, so let's walk through some of these. Sine of 450, well, this is not a reciprocal trig function. Okay, is my angle between 0 and 360? No. So first thing we want to do, subtract 360. This one I think I can do without a calculator. This would be the sine of 100. Nope, I messed up. It's 90. <laughs> it's 90 degrees. All right, sine of 90 degrees. OK, so this is the coterminal angle, and it will have the same value as 450. So we can continue with sine of 90. Now, if it's not in quadrant 1, I mean, technically, this is on the border, but it is 90 degrees or less. So we don't need to use a reference angle. I would only be referencing sine of 90. OK, so now if you want to use your left hand trick, right, sine uh, 90 degrees would be your thumb. Sine would be on the right. You'd get square root of 4 over 2, which is 2 over 2 or 1. Right? Uh, next, we could figure out if I'm if I'm in one of the quadrants to figure out if it's positive or negative, obviously at 90 degrees, we're actually on the border of our quadrants. And sine at the top here, the y coordinate is positive 1. So our answer here, the sine of 450 degrees, it's the same as the sine is 90 degrees, is positive 1. Okay, let's try our next one. Cosecant. All right, cosecant is a reciprocal. This is the reciprocal, that's not a P, reciprocal of sine of 60 degrees. Now I check my angle. Are we between 0 and 360? Yes. Okay. Step three, is it outside quadrant 1? Uh, no, it's in quadrant 1, so that's perfect. We don't need to use a reference angle. It's, it's in the first quadrant. Okay, so then use the left hand trick to figure it out. 60 degrees is your pointer finger, right? Sine would be on the right. So this would be square root of 3 over 2. So we get square root of 3 over 2. That's the sine of 60 degrees. I'll write that here. Square root of 3 over 2. 
And then we need the cosecant, which is the reciprocal. So we gotta flip that guy upside down. Okay. Now it says, use all students take calculus to figure out if it's positive or negative. Um, well, if you're in the first quadrant, remember they're all positive, including our reciprocals. By the way, if you're a reciprocal, you know, is if the original trig value is negative in quadrant two, the reciprocal is negative in quadrant two. We're just flipping the fraction upside down. Okay, so we flip this upside down. Last step, if it has a radical in the bottom, we have to rationalize it. So we get two root three over three. That is the cosecant of 30 degrees. Sorry, 60 degrees. Okay, let's try our next one. Secant of four pi thirds. Okay, well, this is another reciprocal. This is the reciprocal of cosine. And let's go ahead and convert this, right? Pi thirds, 180 divided by three would be 60. So this is essentially four times 60 degrees or 240 degrees. Okay, so if you wanna convert that to degrees. Um, now, are we between zero and 360? Yes, so we don't need a co-terminal angle, but we are not in quadrant one. So we need to ask ourselves, which quadrant, or sorry, which x-axis value are we closest to? Zero, 180, or 360? Okay, we're actually closest to 180. How far are we from 180? We are 60 degrees away. So we're going to use the reference angle, cosine of 60 degrees. Like that's what we're gonna use in our first quadrant with our hand rule. So 60 degrees is here and cosine is to the left. So there's only one finger up. So this would be square root of one over two or one half. Okay, so the cosine of 60 degrees is one half. However, 240 degrees puts us in quadrant three, right? I think this is 180 and 270. So we'd be between those. And in quadrant three, only tangent is positive, right? All students take calculus. So if tangent is the only positive one, cosine is negative. So the cosine of 240 degrees would be negative one half. And then secant of 240 degrees or four pi thirds radians is the reciprocal negative two over one or negative two. All that work to get our answer negative two. Okay, let's try another one. Tangent of negative 600. Okay, first of all, I know for sure we are outside the first quadrant. So let's go to our calculator. Let's do negative 600, add 360, add 360 again. Okay, and we end up with 120 degrees would be my co-terminal angle. Now, tangent is not a reciprocal trig function, but let's do our tangent of 120 degrees. Okay, are we between zero and 360? Sorry, we already did that, right? Um, are we in quadrant one? No. So let's use a reference angle. Am I closer to zero, 180, or 360? What is the closest x-axis value? This time again, we're closest to 160. How far away? 60 degrees away. So our reference angle is the tangent of 60 degrees. Now 60 degrees for tangent you should have memorized. That is the square root of three for tangent of 60 degrees. Okay, uh, now it's not a reciprocal trig function. We don't need to put this over one and flip it upside down. Um, we just need to figure out if it's positive or negative. Now we are at 120 degrees, we'd be between 90 and 180. So we're in the second quadrant. We're only sine, right? All students, Take calculus. Only sine is positive, therefore tangent will be negative. So the tangent of 120 degrees is negative square root of three. And therefore, of course, the tangent of negative 600 is the same value. Okay, so negative square root of three. Okay, so here are a few for you guys to try out. 
right? See if you were able to follow those. If you didn't understand something in the last part where I went too fast, go back and play it over and then try these four out. Pause the video, try these out, and uh, unpause when you're finished. Okay, so here are the answers. If you have questions on these four, and I know obviously F is probably the most complicated one here, but questions on these, if you can't follow the steps of what I did here, which is roughly the steps up here, um, have, have questions ready to go at the beginning of class. Okay, that's it. See you in class.